Hey everybody and welcome to the end channel video blog and today what I want to do is a review on a clamp style multimeter made by Ideal and it's the 61746 so let's get right into this review. Now when we first look at this multimeter the one thing you got to take into consideration this doesn't have a diverse range of operation and what I mean is it doesn't have the ability to measure small signals such as milliamps and microamps this is going to be meant for the big jobs. So this is going to be able to observe electricity with true RMS values as well as measuring current up to 600 amps. So when you're looking at this tool, I think it's more or less a complement to an already existing multimeter. This won't be able to cover every job, but considering its optimum range of current, it's ridiculous and really does diversify what you're able to do at your job. So now when we take a look at this thing physically, it's tiny. I mean, the line's been plugged right here. I'll almost have more size than this. Especially when you compare it to something like the Ideal 61340, which just fell. Now this thing's great for that reason alone. You can just throw this in your tool bag and you forget about it. Now it doesn't have a tilting bail or anything, so you won't be able to use this on a bench top. But once again, this isn't meant for a bench top. This is meant to be used on the field and for one hand operation. So it's lightweight, obviously, because it's got no size to it. And it's got some really nice convenient features. First off, it's got a rotary switch that just works well with your thumb, so if you're wearing gloves or anything like that, you can toggle between, you know, abilities, no problems right there. Really nice interface. And then it also has a recessed LCD screen on there. And what I mean is that the plastic right here extrudes beyond this, so it gives you a little bit of protection. So when you drag that across, you're not going to get any scratches or mars on there. Really nice feature. Overall, I'm really impressed by the physical characteristics of this. It's just really nicely constructed, and it just feels like it's going to last a long time. So what I got here is two multimeters in order to compare our 61746 to. Now what I'm doing is running in volts DC into all three of these multimeters. They're all jumpered onto the same measurement and they all are using the basically the same leads. So there shouldn't be too much of a voltage drop across any of the terminals. But it is something that could occur. So what I am showing here is just how proportional these are. Now my Fluke 289, which is going to be our standard reference for this video, is calibrated, and that's why it is, other than the fact that it's got the highest tolerance. So as you can see, it's displaying 26.403, and our 61746 is really holding up. As you can see, it's a very proportional reading to this, and it's maintaining that. Now as we vary the volts into the system, let's see how responsive it is. And as you can see, it's just really catering to the new measurements, and it's really keeping up to date and it's still registering very proportional to what the Fluke 289 is displaying. Really impressed with this. I was a little bit writing this off at the start of it and that's only because the resolution of this wasn't that accurate. But as you can see, all my thoughts have been undermined. Now before I plug this into the wall and measure the AC voltage which is next in the series, I just want to make sure that you guys are aware. Be cautious, be extremely safe when doing this. Obviously the potential of AC electricity does have the potential to kill. So right now I'm feeding an AC waveform into this and it's coming right from the wall. And as you can tell, it's doing an amazing job. Because this is a true RMS meter, it's going to give you an extremely proportional reading to what the Fluke 289 is. Now the 61340 here is not a true RMS meter. And as you can tell, the reading is not as accurate as what these two are capable of doing. It's an expensive feature to get integrated into your multimeter, but it's well worth it. As you can tell, if accuracy is important to you. Now, just moving along, I just want to see what happened if I pumped in a different type of sine wave. And what I'm pumping into this unit right now is about a 1 kilohertz residual wave. And as you can tell, this thing's began to lose its tolerance. And that's because this thing is not intended for frequencies beyond that. It's meant more for the industrial electrician who is probably going to only deal with 60 or 50 hertz. So as we bump it up to 5,000 hertz, you can see that this thing really begins to skew off and the tolerances are completely undermined. Now one thing I want to quickly make reference to is this thing can function as a non-contact voltage detector. Now this thing's got a ridiculous sensitivity. As you can tell, I'm extremely far away from the circuit. But when I hit that button, it registers it from a very far distance. Which is amazing because this is going to quickly allow you to follow traces in the wall that may not be able to be observed very easily. It's ridiculously sensitive, and if there's multiple signals in the area, that can be a consequence because you'll be picking up on both of them, but it really does diversify the ability of this tool. So now what I got here is an induction motor, and I want to see how this thing does for resistance measurement on the low end. So what I did is I took a four terminal resistance measurement of this, and I got 1.6 ohms. So I'm going to create the pathway, and let's see what we register on this multimeter. 
And once it stabilizes, you can see that we're reading 1.5, extremely proportional. Now going right to the exact opposite end of the spectrum, I have a one mega ohm resistor in line with this. And as you can see, it's reading directly proportional to what that resistor is. This meter has an amazing ability to measure resistance and it really definitely stands out in this test. Now the next setting we drop down to is continuity. And as you can see, it's not responsive. So when we hold it in place for a while, you definitely register that it is a good connection and it gives it off a nice audio beep, but it's not really fast on the get go. Now as we scroll to our next function, we have the ability to measure current for a range of 40 amps and 600 amps. And what I have here is an isolated power supply line going to my AC to DC converter from my laptop. And once again, this is isolated because if you measure both, you won't establish a reading because you have two currents and they cancel each other out. And now I have a UEI current meter in line with this. So it's going to give us something to make a relative comparison to. So we clamp this on and let's see how proportional those readings are. And as you can see, it's extremely well within its tolerance. And now, even though this is not as accurate as this, it's extremely well worth it. Because first off, the major advantage to having a clamp style is you're able to measure massive amounts of current. First off, this thing can measure up to 600 amps, where this unit can only measure up to 10 amps, which is very common for most multimeters of this style. There's some that can measure up to 20, but nowhere near to what this thing can do. And 600 amps is definitely something you'll see out in industry. So it's one great benefit to the tool. Next is the safety. In order to get this in the connection, I had to make a makeshift connection which is not over the top safe. But when you look at something like this and you have purely insulated material, safety does not come into question once. And the other thing about this is just the overall convenience. As you can see, I'm already taking a measurement where the setup for this is a very long time in comparison. Now being an absolute electronics chunk, I just had to tear this down. And as you can see the soldering joints here, beautiful job. Um, it's just an awesome quality to this unit. The banana jacks here are well soldered onto the board, it's definitely have some durability. Uh, these loose wires right here, not overly fond of, but it's not a big deal because this is a compartment you'll never get in. And this type of multimeter, there's no fuses so you don't have to worry about changing anything like that. The battery placement on these, really nice. Uh, you can see right there and they correspond to the soldered positions right here, the soldered I should say. So it's just got a really nice feel and it's just going to be really enduring. The only thing I don't like about it is there's no brass inserts where the battery cap goes on. So after repetitive opening and closing of this, it will ultimately wear out and you'll have to replace it. So what are my final thoughts on this multimeter? Great investment, well worth the money. It really diversifies the range of what your existing multimeter can do. You're going to be able to hit those high amps, and plus the non-contact voltage detector on this is ridiculously sensitive. And it has no footprint, so this isn't going to take up any room in your tool bag. Anyways guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Enjoy your week.